All right, series and cylinders bodybuilding. Like, share, subscribe. Click that notification bell so you get the latest content. So Chris Bumstead was on value tainment with Patrick but David. Now, the reason why this is so significant is because Patrick David and value is as mainstream as it gets on podcasts. If you guys don't know who Patrick, but David is, he is his family migrated from Iran and he came to the United States uh, when obviously with nothing, he was very poor growing up and he made himself a multi millionaire living in the United States. He actually joined the military after the military, he started an insurance company. He, uh, <clears throat> had a uh, tremendous success with his insurance company and then started uh, value attainment, which is a huge podcast. One of the biggest in the world. From what I understand, he has nine separate businesses. I don't know which all nine businesses are. I, you know, I don't know the details, but the guy is extremely successful. He's had on people like Robert Kennedy Jr. He's on pad people like Vivek, on he's had people like Ron DeSantis. He said has major players, Mike Tyson, Kobe Bryant. I mean, you pretty much name it. He this guy is interviewed. He started off doing interviewing a lot of what, what really made him famous was interviewing the, the mafia figure, the former mafia figure several years ago, which really ignited the mafia craze on YouTube. It was him and Vlad TV that ignited this mafia craze on YouTube. And he even had Larry Mazza on, who is a friend of mine. And he actually, Larry comes from the same neighborhood I came from, Brooklyn. He was, you know, deeply entrenched in, in the mafia in his, you know, early years in life and went to prison for murder and <laughs> came out and changed his life around. And he was interviewed him. I mean, he also, which I didn't know, wanted to be a bodybuilder when he came over to the United States, he idolized Arnold Schwarzenegger, figuring, you know, he came as an immigrant and made this tremendous impact. And he was a success story. And he was a great admirer of Ronnie Coleman and Sean Ray and Kevin Lavrone. And he's had those guys on his channel. He's had Sean Ray, he's had uh, Dorian Yates, he's had Ronnie Coleman, and, you know, you name it. But now he has basically moved into a very mainstream political news worthy podcast. And to have Chris Bumstead on as a member of the bodybuilding community is tremendous because it's truly showing how Chris Bumstead is transcending bodybuilding from a niche market to a mainstream market. Now, that being said, I was relatively excited to watch the show. I'm more of a fan of Patrick Van David than I am of Bumstead. But that being said, this was significant for the bodybuilding world, right? I mean, this is like equivalent to like, you know, uh, you know, Dorian Yates in the early 90s being on uh I don't know, Tom Brokoff or something like that, right? The older generation will understand what I'm what I'm getting. But that being said, if you watch the interview, it is as boring. There is nothing profound that goes on in this interview. It is a great interview if you need to get to sleep quick. And and it had me thinking, I'm like, why is this kid so popular? He's 28 years old. You listen to him. He's very mundane. Every answer is very general. When they spoke about great bodybuilders, whether they spoke about his career, whether they spoke about, he did ask him about steroids, whether they talked about supplementation, the workout, everything was very general. Everything was politically correct. He does. He said nothing motivational. He said nothing profound. He said nothing inspirational. Um, basically, you know, he gave answers that any run-of-the-mill average competitive bodybuilder would give. Like, like, for example, he asked him about the steroids, and he asked him about how can you research and find out 
about steroids. And he's like, you know, basically telling him, you know, it's difficult because there's so many, so much information and so many information is good and so many information is bad. And um, you have to decipher for who, which is legit and which isn't. And then he went into how he talks to kids and tells them don't do steroids because you don't know if it's worth it because of the side effects and so on and so forth. And if you're, he's had kids come up to him that was 17 years old and he has told them, don't even think about it yet. You haven't even, you know, figured out how to train right and how the nutrition helps and supplementation helps and it should be the last thing on your mind. And everything is the, is the politically correct answer. Everything was run of the mill. Everything was general. And he's from Canada and they touched on like uh, Justin Trudeau and he really couldn't talk about politics much you know that's not his forte and you could tell see if you watch value team and you watch patrick and david actually interview people if a person is really on fire if, if a person he is interviewing is really saying these tremendous things these inspirational things these profound things he lets him rock he doesn't interrupt him he lets him rock go ahead now he had on uh judge joe brown i think two weeks ago i mean he just let him speak. I mean, the, the the it was the it was an amazing interview, and you're like Judge Joe Brown, the the the, the TV judge. Oh, it was a tremendous, tremendous interview, and you could tell that Patrick McDavid was really trying to pull information out of him. You know, and it wasn't like Bumster was giving one word answers. Don't get me wrong, Bumster was just giving very generalized answers, which doesn't really make for a great interview. Like, so for example, you know, he put up, he brought up some articles uh, about superfoods, so on and so forth. And Bumstead was basically just, you know, gave a generalized answer that it's basically all the same and, you know, stick to whole foods and vegetables and red meat and, and fish. Like you couldn't get in depth in nutrition either, right? He could give the basics. And I'm saying to myself, why is this kid so popular? Why? What is it about him that people love so much? And he's a likable guy. But usually somebody of that caliber of popularity has something special, like a spark, like something that a magnetic personality that you just want to be around. He doesn't have that. And then it finally hit me. It finally dawned on me why he's so popular. He is literally a reflection of today's younger generation. And here's what I mean by that. When you watch the interview, Patrick Man David is trying to get to the point of his fire and competitive spirit. And Bumstead is basically saying, oh, you know, um, I almost quit bodybuilding. When I turned pro, uh, I'm six foot one. Um, you know, I wasn't going to be a good open bodybuilder. And then they came out with classic physique. So I was like, oh, that's where I could excel. So I did that. And then he asked him, would, would would another challenge be you doing the open? Well, it's not really in the cards right now. Um, I've thought about it, but I really don't want to push the envelope. That's not really what I want to do. But what is the next challenge? Do you have businesses? Do you have something that you want to do? These are all questions that he was being asked. And he's like, well, you know, I really like meeting the people and inspiring the young generation. So I have to kind of figure out how I can do that, and put that in as my next challenge. So he has he he has no plan after bodybuilding. He has a supplement company. He has an energy drink. They had it right there on the table, right? Bum energy. So what I'm trying to get at is this is a guy that all the pieces fell in the right spot. The world aligned for him. If classic physique didn't come out, he'd be a regular dude in the gym. Right, because he said he would have quit bodybuilding if classic physique didn't come out. His genetics are so amazing that he shot right to the top. Because to have that kind of a small waist, tremendous shoulders, flaring quads. I mean, his waist is so tiny. His waist has got to be 28, 29 inch. I mean, that's how small this is. These are genetic proportions. And I mean, they showed pictures over time of what he was like as a child. And a picture in high school, and you could see he had a lot of muscle in high school, and he was very athletic. And then they showed pictures of him competing and all the way up to this year's classic physique Olympia win, the five-time Mr. Olympia. And you could see that his physique got greater and greater over time. But he couldn't express a fire, competitive spirit, attitude, 
He couldn't explain a tremendous athletic competitiveness in him because it's not in him. And Patrick Davis is trying to pull it out of him. You could, when you watch the video, he's trying to pull it out of him. He's saying, ah, I saw you, you know, I see when you, when you, you know, you smirk at the number two guy and you smile. I see, you know, you thinking, you know, that you could, you could win. He's like, yeah, I know, you know, I know I could win. So he, he, this is what today's generation can relate to because the majority of Gen Z, anybody under 30 has the same attitude. Well, whatever happens, happens. And whatever, wherever the chips fall, so on and so forth. He almost gives the illusion that if you're just a nice guy and you really don't have to kill yourself, things will work out. And that's what the Gen Z kids want to believe. But then he goes into what he does have, and that's his discipline. Going to bed at uh, 8 o'clock every night, getting his meals in, training, so on and so forth. It's his discipline that, that takes him to the championship level. Not the competitive spirit in him, if that makes any sense. It's the combination of his genetics, his discipline, things aligned, fine form. And that's basically what happened. And that's what Gen Z believes what you need to be successful. I can't tell you how many kids I talk to. And, you know, they think you're going to do a YouTube video, an Instagram video, and you're going to do, you know, I'm going to be successful doing, uh, you know, social media influencer. But the bumps that social media, and the same thing with Sam Sulik, social media is so in their face that they think that this is the norm. When the truth of the matter is, this is 0.0001% of the population, probably even less than that. And it, it, it finally hit me. It finally dawned on me. I'm like, they could relate to him. Not only physically, not only does his physique look like it's more attainable than the open bodybuilders, but his personality they could relate to. It's his personality that they also could relate to because the majority of the kids that I meet under 30 are just like him. Nice, decent. They're, they're not, they don't have this killer instinct. They don't have this, 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 they, they, they don't have, they're not pricks by nature they didn't come up hard so it, it, they're, they're nice kids i'm and i'm talking about the, the the boys right not not the girls so they could relate more to him they can't relate to a a mike tyson that says things like discipline is doing things that you don't like doing but doing them anyway they don't they can't relate they they don't understand that they don't get it but they relate to him when he says yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I went right to the top and everything, you know, worked out. And, you know, I try to be very friendly and create relationships. And, you know, that this isn't in the cards right now. And I don't know what the future holds. And I don't know what the next challenge is going to be. And he asked him if he wanted to do the open. He says it's not in the cards. He asked him if he wanted 10 Olympias. He said, no, that's not important to me. He asked him what his next business venture was going to be. He didn't know. He asked him what his next great challenge in life was going to be he didn't know he couldn't give an answer everything was very generalized but still all that being said is it worth watching if you want to watch it if you're a bumstead fan you're going to watch it right but it is significant because he's transcending what is a niche sport into mainstream but he's not doing it intentionally and you could see this is not his that wasn't his intent at all to transcend bodybuilding from a niche sport into mainstream. And I don't think he has any intentions of continuing trying to do that because Patrick Ben David gave him basically a business model. If you watch the interview, he gave him a business model of how, if he bought the Olympia, how he would be able to make it more mainstream. And he would do, you know, research studies and he would, uh, how he would change the, the, the prize money. And, <clears throat> and he even went into the story about how he was trying to buy the Olympia. Uh, before Jake Wood did, I was more I was more interested in what Patrick Van David had to say and how significant bodybuilding has been in his life than Bumstead. But look, at the same time, he's doing something right, and I think I think I finally figured it out. I think that's the answer. The link for the whole interview will be in the description area. Just click it and watch it and see if what I had said it has any validity to it. Give me your opinion. I think my opinion has is, is valid. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know. Chris Bumstead on Valuetainment, significant for the sport of bodybuilding. And there'll be more content coming.